Hello, I'm Joseph Palermo. Welcome to this episode of Dream Master Studios Theater. We want to take a quick moment to remind those of you who are online that we at Dream Master Studios are very interested in your feedback. One viewer emailed us and said, I saw about 15 minutes of your possible alien skull presentation on Charter Cable Channel 5, Cable Ready Television, this evening. Very interesting, but the skull looked to me like a baby chimp. I'm not a skull expert, that's what I think I saw. Do you plan to show that video again? If so, could you tell me when and where? I need to at least take a second look. Signed, J.M. We emailed J.M. back with the pertinent information, including links to other websites for more information. We also asked J.M. for a general location so that we could begin knowing who was watching this program. J.M. emailed us back, I live in the Manchester Baldwin area. I'll pass along your message about showtimes and web addresses. So, if you are one of J.M.'s referrals, we had a personal thank you and welcome. And we remind all of our viewers that at the end of each program will be our email and website address. We want to hear from you and hear your take on our programs. Now, Mr. Ken McLean is the individual you'll be hearing from in this program. At the time of this videotaping in 1985, Mr. McLean held a BA in psychology and technical journalism and was working on a doctorate in adult education. Mr. McLean gave a most impressive presentation titled Educating for Critical Consciousness. Delivered from a posture of sociological examination, we now join Mr. McLean in examining the effects of a UFO experience on the eyewitness and the general public at large. I'm Joseph Palermo, and this is Dream Master Studios Theater. And that people act upon the information they receive. I have a diagram that might illustrate a way that we perceive information. And I want to use it in the context of a person not in this room, but say a typical housewife in St. Louis suburbia. Someone who may read the Gallup polls, may read some what we call the rag sheets, the uh, midnight news, etc. U.S. News World Report down the line. She may even subscribe to uh, a magazine like Omni that occasionally features information on UFOs. But generally it's not a part of her life. It's not something that has a direct relevance. If we put the phenomena in a little box that represents everything we know about UFOs, or would like to know, <coughs> we'll call this the UFO phenomena. These are all the particular details, the information, the current theories, That is, in short, the UFO. Around that, and for this person, this typical suburban housewife, is a social setting. This is that person's environment. The family, the job, the community, all the things that that person relates to in a larger context. Along with that, you have, if you want to look at the way that this UFO relates to the setting or to this individual in the setting, the consequences of the UFO for that person, or the UFO phenomenon. How does it relate to this person's life? What information about this UFO phenomena is going to make any difference in this person's life? Going to change the way she relates to her husband, to her children, to her coworkers, to the society at large, the letter she writes to her congressman. Congressmen have a lot of trouble with the federal deficit. It's going to be a while before they get around to UFOs, it looks like. <laughs> there are priorities, too. I made a list of a few things that it might enter someone's mind. Along with them would be the family, the finances, work, health, one's love life. But there are some other priorities. The things that beckon at us from the media. Things like the hostage crisis in Lebanon the famine in Ethiopia, nuclear proliferation, damage to the environment, accelerated change in our work and family environments. All these things are impinging on us 24 hours a day, causes nightmares. It's very difficult to cope with these kinds of issues alone. This person 
who doesn't really put the UFO at the center of her life, it sort of comes on the periphery, unless she happens to have a close encounter. Unless there's some direct connection in her life, something that will be meaningful. But around this setting, a more global relationship. How is this phenomenon related to issues around the world? Is it something that's specific just to this particular location? Let's say this person has either read about an encounter or knows someone that's had a close encounter, or they just picked up a magazine and suddenly developed an interest. She's going to want to know how it's relevant to herself and her family, but also, is this going on in other places? This is a worldwide phenomenon. And then there's another factor, an important one that we think about a lot, relates to all of these. I'll just do this as a simple line instead of a box. That is time. My future is shakier than the past. I guess it's like the rest of this. <laughs> When did this phenomenon first appear? How far back does it go in history? If this woman is a good Christian, what does she think of the relevance of UFO activity in biblical times, as some writers have hypothesized? What does it represent for the future? <coughs> if you're one of the UFO contactees who claims special knowledge about the future, some precognitive ability, and you believe that the UFO represents a superior civilization come here to help us through a rough transition, there's another context. There's some meaningful relationship. But this person will put this information in a context and will prioritize it along with all the other information that she gets. The important thing for us to remember is that this information, it's going to have to come to this person in a way that they can use it or it's relevant to their life or we're going to have to be stuck with this kind of sort of a gathering and this kind of approach to the phenomenon. We're going to have to take it a little piece at a time, in other words, instead of biting off the whole chunk. I think the most difficult thing about putting this in my own context was realizing that many times I have priorities that go beyond this. I have a financial priority that says that I pay an electric bill before I'll pay for my MUFON Journal subscription. You know, there are things we have to deal with on a day-to-day on -day basis. <clears throat> One thing it led me to think about was the barriers to action. I've had a lot of information thrown at me from a number of sources on things like the, the famine in Ethiopia as an example. I empathize with that. I sympathize with those people that are in that tragic situation, but I haven't yet done anything about it directly. 